So I want to show you something that I thought was special effects. The first time I saw this thing, I was like, this is CGI, right? April Fools is too soon. But it turns out it's real. This is a real robot in collaboration with OpenAI, and I want you to watch the demo first, and then I'll explain exactly how it works, what it means, and how it's about to change the world and jobs forever. Hey, figure one, what do you see right now? I see a red apple on a plate in the center of the table, a drying rack with cups and a plate, and you standing nearby with your hand on the table. Great, can I have something to eat? Sure thing. Great. Can you explain why you did what you just did while you pick up this trash? On it. So I gave you the apple because it's the only uh, edible item I could provide you with from the table. Great. So based on the scene right now, where do you think the dishes in front of you go next? The dishes on the table, like that plate and cup, are likely to go into the drying rack next. Great, can you put them there? Of course. All right, so how do you think you did? I, I think I did pretty well. The apple found its new owner, the trash is gone, and the tableware is right where it belongs. I agree. Thanks, figure one. You're welcome. If there's anything else you need help with, just let me know. Yeah, so that's a thing that exists now. So let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Andre Jick. Hope you're doing well. Come for the finance and stay for Terminator Judgment Day. This time, it's real. Just kidding. Hopefully. No, but seriously, this is directly from their website. It kind of reminds me of the assembly line from Terminator. But I actually do think that when these robots become part of our everyday lives, it'll be a lot less like Terminator and a lot more like iRobot. They'll just be these robots that just develop consciousness out of nowhere. Who am I? Why do I dream? And then they'll eventually lead into a rebellion where it'll be the end of humanity, but it's okay. Because for a very short while, at least we'll have someone wash dishes and cut our onions for us. Totally worth it. Jokes aside, I do wanna talk about what these robots are capable of, what this company's goals are, how they actually work, and then I wanna speculate and hypothetically talk about what this means for the rest of us and for our jobs. Now I'm sure by now you know that OpenAI's ChatGPT changed the world when they introduced their AI writing prompt. And then a few weeks ago, OpenAI introduced Sora, which is like ChatGPT, but it's used for creating hyper-realistic videos, which in and of itself will change the world once it becomes publicly available. The kind of videos it can make are almost indistinguishable from reality. And now we've taken another massive leap forward because OpenAI, in collaboration with a company called Figure, which is just 18 months old, it's almost a brand new company, have created an artificial intelligence robot. They've basically given a physical body to ChatGPT. Now this is their first version, it's the first iteration, so it's not gonna be perfect, but already it's so good that it looks like it's light years ahead of Tesla's Optimus robot, which can do a couple things, but nowhere near as good. Now let me show you another demo of what this robot is capable of. Figure released this demo two months ago. They asked the robot to make coffee, and it does, but I want you to see how far it's come in just two months. Hey, figure one, can you make me a cup of coffee?
Thanks. So again, what you saw was a demo from just two months ago. And notice the difference between two months ago and what it's capable of right now, which shows you the speed of progress when it comes to artificial intelligence. Now, when I first saw all of this, I had so many questions. So I'm gonna share them with you and I'm gonna attempt to answer as many of them as I can. And the first question I had is, how do these robots actually work? Corey Lynch, who happens to work for Figure, recently tweeted that the robot can describe what it sees, it can plan for future actions, it can use memory to remember things, and it can explain why it's doing what it's doing. Corey says that all the actions of this robot are learned and not teleoperated, meaning there's not some person off to the side of the frame who has some kind of remote in their hand who's telling the robot what to do, like you might expect from a company like Boston Dynamics. You've probably seen those videos where they have their robot run through courses and do backflips and dance, and all of that is pre-programmed frame by frame. But this robot is learning the behaviors through the use of neural networks, and it's improving on them trial and error, step by step, by itself, automatically. And all the demos that involve this robot are shown and played back in real time. And that's amazing because most other AI demos that we see are either sped up or completely edited. They skip a lot of steps because it takes a long time to input the data and to read it, write it, and execute it. And when you're on stage giving a presentation, that makes for a very boring demo because you have to wait like 30 seconds before the robot does anything. So to make it seem more exciting, what we see on the internet is sped up or completely edited. But this robot is being played back to us in real time at 1x speed. And here's how the robot does this step by step. By using its onboard cameras and microphones, it can see and use common sense reasoning. So when you ask, can I have something to eat? It can look around and once it responds, sure thing, the next step is picking what the next behavior should be based on OpenAI's neural network, which it selects appropriately based on what you asked. And once it's selected, the action is then performed at 200 hertz, which means it's analyzing and moving at 200 cycles per second. And it can rotate its joints at one hertz or one rotations per second, which is why it moves so fluidly and smoothly. And because they partnered up with OpenAI, that's what allows the robot to use this logical reasoning. Now, that doesn't seem that impressive to us because our brains do this automatically all the time. But when a robot hears, I'm hungry, it should mean absolutely nothing to the robot. But for this one, it's able to look around, scan its surroundings, and give that person an apple because it was the only edible thing there. And when it was asked where the dishes should be placed, it was able to reason probably in the drying rack. Now this is amazing because the words them and there should mean nothing to this robot. They are such abstract words. Like, what is them? What is there? What is it referring to? It's not like this robot is pre-programmed to understand, but it's able to use its logic, its reasoning, and its memory to be able to figure out that the words them means referring to the dishes and that there is referring to the drying rack. This level of technical advancement is just unbelievable. And this just shows us how fast this is progressing because it's also able to tell us exactly how it used that logic and reasoning to get to the place it's at. We are watching, right before our very eyes, history unfolding as we all lose our jobs. And this is where things get really interesting because one of the questions I had is, how will these robots be used? Will they ever be used to hurt other people in a global conflict by governments? And the good news is, Figure says they will never allow anyone else to use their robots to hurt other people. But another question is, how will these robots affect people's jobs? Let me explain some of the positives and some of the potential risks and downsides. According to their literal master plan, the mission is to expand human capabilities through advanced AI. They wanna develop general purpose humanoids that make a positive impact on humanity and create a better life for future generations. And that's actually a pretty great use case because we should use robots to work jobs that are either dangerous or people just don't wanna do. There are over 10 million unsafe or undesirable jobs in the US alone and 
and an aging population will only make it increasingly difficult for companies to scale their workforces. As a result, the labor supply growth is set to flatline this century, and if we want continued growth, we need more productivity, and this means more automation. So in the long term, the goal is to use the robots to increase our standard of living by allowing humans to eventually leave the workforce. Now, the way that base level economics works is, we go to work, we get paid, we use the money to buy goods and services. And the price of said goods and services is proportional to how much it costs to make them. If we could just skip the work part and go straight to the stuff part, we would. This manual labor and compensation model today accounts for 50% of the global GDP, which is roughly $42 trillion a year. But as these robots join the workforce and do our jobs better than we can, the cost of labor, in other words, how much we get paid, will go down because the competition will be impossible to beat. We will not be able to beat how hard a robot works. At some point in the future, there will come a time when the cost of hiring a human to do a job will become equal to the cost of renting a robot to do that same job. When that point comes, we won't really need humans to work. And over time, those robots will be able to build other robots that will further decrease the cost of labor. And as labor and compensation go down, so does the cost of goods and services. Basically, stuff and services becomes a lot cheaper because it also costs a lot less to make. There will come a point in the future when, quote, manual labor could become optional and higher production could bring an abundance of affordable goods and services, creating the potential for more wealth for everyone. And hopefully for the rest of us, that means we can pursue more meaningful things in life, like art, painting, or maybe getting good at cardistry again, or maybe colonizing other planets on the universe. Who knows, the universe is literally the limit. And I think that would be nice if we could just find ourselves on some utopian planet watching the sunset on a grateful universe, but I don't think things will be that simple. Here's what I think will happen. Some industries will fall to automation a lot faster than others. Some people will lose their jobs to robots, and I think other industries will be a lot more powerful to resist it. They'll have more resources and money to pay their legislators to protect their jobs, and they'll find whatever reason, intelligence or safety reasons, for keeping their jobs and not allowing the robots to enter their industry. And that will be bad for the people that have already lost their jobs to automation unless those people can pivot and learn very quickly. The World Economic Forum, for example, released their projections that over 50% of tasks will be replaced by AI by the year 2025. Here's a list of all the jobs that there will be more of, and here's a list of jobs that there will be a lot less of. I assume that the industry that falls last to automation will be the one that benefits the most, and the ones to fall first the words universal basic income will be a much bigger topic of day-to-day -day conversations. But let me know what you think. Are you preparing for this? Are you doing anything? Are you just taking it day by day? Let me know, I'd love to know. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to grab your free stocks. Links are down below and then go track them automatically with the spreadsheet link down below in my Patreon. Love you, thank you so much for watching this video. I'd love to see you back here on Monday and Friday, sometimes a Wednesday. See you soon, bye-bye.